All right, as promised, we are going to recap what was a very historic week in crypto. Bitcoin seeing a new all-time high. Ethereum nearly scraping $3,000 uh, for the first time since the first half of the year. Uh, so we have a ton to go over. Uh, I would like to mention that there were a few big standouts over the past week uh, that were a bit overshadowed by Bitcoin's all-time high. One being Dogecoin up 26% over the past week. Kronos here being by far the best performer among the top 70 or so assets, up about 45%. And then Athena over here, which has really come on strong in 2024, up 35% over the past week. So yes, it's been a bit of an altcoin party. Uh, as kind of predicted, we saw Bitcoin go up first with Trump being elected back on November 5th, officially. And over the next, call it 72 hours, we've seen a lot of that profit immediately start being redistributed back to altcoins that have been longing for a big jump for a long time. We've seen Cardano yesterday having a big surge, Chainlink today having a big surge. So two very notable communities have seen uh, a lot of celebrations going on there. We also see that Bitcoin, compared to last week, actually isn't seeing anything special in terms of a social volume rise. Uh, Bitcoin had already been talked about a lot as it breached 70K in the anticipation of the election. So that's not a big surprise. We do see Tether having a significant uptick in discussion as, of course, many people are moving dry powder to exchanges to FOMO in and buy Bitcoin, just as you would predict. And of course, not just Bitcoin, many altcoins out there as well. And then we see overall, the overall market cap is up about 5.2% in crypto with volume up a massive 42.4%. So yes, lots of interest and intrigue related to this rally that we've been seeing. And I also want to mention, we updated the development activity just a couple days ago and uh, we announced that Internet Computer was seeing the largest rise in development activity. Uh, all of a sudden, we've seen Chainlink surpass it and now having the most notable GitHub events per day over the past 30 days. So that we had a little flip right at the top that's worth noting. Again, for those who are kind of discovering the Santiman platform a bit and trying to find a use case for development activity, Understand that this is a very long-term metric. This isn't just, you know, invest in the, the highest ones and expect bull runs right around the corner. But generally speaking, you'll see that market cap ranks are very, very much high or low, depending on how you want to look at it. But they're some of the best market caps in crypto that are seeing the highest development rates. That's not a coincidence. Projects that are innovating and improving and finding ways to advance their technology to keep up with the demand and what the status quo is in crypto, it pays off and generally has uh, market cap growth follow when these teams are consistently working on growing their own coins. Now, obviously, one of the big stories this week was Bitcoin's all-time high, initially jumping above 75K uh, with the announced selection of Trump as the 47th U.S. president, but we went higher. We actually saw a yet another all-time high just a few hours before this recording, getting up to just short of 77.2K before seeing a slight retrace. And yes, we'll go over some of the metrics to figure out whether we'll be reaching something like 80K in the near future, um, but it is worth noting that with this, has come a big surge in the S&P 500 as well. This was kind of predicted by many people who were voting for Trump or just watching from the sidelines and understanding that a vote for Trump or, or the, a selection for Trump would likely be perceived as the business-friendly option, the economic-friendly option. There was definitely a positive reaction to the fact that the candidate who was promising capital gains staying the same versus the candidate who was saying that, you know, billionaires would be taxed more and capital gains would be reconsidered. 
that would lead to a positive result, right? Because we have a candidate who is stating that he's going to keep the economy growing and, you know, make sure that businesses are not paying uh, exorbitant taxes, things like that. That's going to have a positive impact on the markets. Maybe, you know, we'll have a retrace because this was a pretty big reaction uh, once we heard that Trump was the official elected president for the next four years. Um, but generally speaking, it, it appears that the consensus from the community is this is not only good for, you know, the U.S. and potentially world economies, but also good for cryptocurrency. And it's also interesting to see that gold and silver have taken a turn downwards because, you know, gold and silver and precious metals, they're generally perceived to be safe haven, more fear driven types of investments. And when everyone thinks the economy is going to be good, they sell off these safe havens to go after more aggressive and risky, therefore more rewarding investment vehicles like crypto or, you know, Apple stock, what, what have you because they believe that that's going to be the better bet during a prosperous economy. Also very important to pay attention to, the positive versus negative sentiment among traders, among X, Reddit, Telegram, 4chan, and Bitcoin talk, they predictably spiked like crazy. This was one of the highest spikes, about three to one positive versus negative comments that we've seen in a couple of years. And... Yes, we had a temporary drop down. It's hard to tell from these long interval candles. But yeah, we did have a, a slight retrace that started to cause a little bit of concern that we might have seen the top. And there's, this was a bit too uh, much of a bull trap to see Trump elected. But it quickly bounced right back and we went even higher, right? And I actually consider the fact that we are back down to a more reasonable level with the euphoria be a pretty good sign, right? We've talked about how markets typically go the opposite direction of crowds' expectations. And as we see, the crowd was expecting prices to go through the roof here, and then it dropped the next 12 hours. And then when we started to see more reasonable sentiment down here, prices went even higher. So the ratio is at about 1.9. I drew this horizontal line just to mark about 2.0. So this means there's more than two positive comments for every one negative comment. If it's above, pretty clear sign we're euphoric. If it's, you know, more in the 1.5 to 1, uh, I'm sorry, 1.5 to 2.0 range, right around here, that's about middle of the road. And if it gets below, that's actually juicy. You can see, especially here, this was a great bottom signal because there was a lot of fear. Pretty decent bottom signal here. It bounced right afterwards. And then here, great bottom signal as well. This was right about two days before the election. And after a little bit of waiting for the results to come in, you see what happened when the uh, more perceived bullish result occurred. As for some of the more traditional on-chain and social metrics, let's take a look at transaction volume here. Over the past six months, you can definitely see there's been a trend of rising. I can even add this indicator for just a simple moving average over the over 30 days. And this line here, which I'll make a little more clear, we'll call it, yeah, white is fine. Um, it's definitely been moving up. So after bottoming out this 30 day average in, in early September, this was right when we saw that crash down to about 53K, we were seeing about $12.08 billion worth of transaction volume per day. Now it's up to $17.64 billion. So very good sign that the network is becoming more active. This is actually the highest level that we've seen over the past six months. If you can zoom it out to the past year. And it's only rivaled by the March euphoria that occurred after we got that big first all-time high of about 60, I'm sorry, 73.8, I believe it was. And then transaction volume quickly settled down after we started to chop and continued to chop for about six months straight before we really started to see this October, October rally 
take effect. I remember how much people were shouting October from the rooftops, expecting prices to rise. The first half of the month was disappointing. So that narrative went away. And as soon as it went away, that's when we saw October take effect. So, uh, you know, just as I said, prices moved the opposite direction of the crowd's expectations. Besides transaction volume, we're still seeing a pretty steady, healthy rise in daily active addresses too. This is crucial for any coin to grow over time. We need to see more and more utility and network activity. And that's what we're getting right now. More unique addresses per day are interacting on the network. We're seeing uh, right before the day closed here, about 733.6K addresses per day. It was as low in June, it's about 640.9K. So yeah, we're moving in the right direction. Again, not near where we were in March. Same with circulation, that's what these red bars indicate. So these are the amount of unique coins moving per day. So we're excluding wash trading from the equation to get a more pure understanding of how many coins and how many addresses here in orange we're really seeing interact on a daily basis. And it's mildly moving back in the right direction, which is helping to justify that this price jump is real and should be sustained. So good sign there. MVRV. Now, this is a big one. We've talked about the 30-day MVRV a lot. And generally speaking, anything above about 15%, if it gets there, that's a big danger zone. You can see it how it approached that exact point during the March all-time high. It hit just above there in looks like the end of February. And then after about a week, we saw this big drop. You did not want to be on the uh, buy side when we were peaking up at about 73K back in March because you would have lost, if I hold down shift here, just to give a rough estimate, uh, over the next six-ish weeks or so, you would have lost 20% on your investment. So you don't want to be buying when the orange lines are way above the 15% mark. You do, historically, get good results if you're buying down here. Obviously, it's only happened once where we've seen the orange line go below 15%. But when it did, during that August 4th, August 5th crash, that was a prime time where you could have bought in, and if you had just held since the very bottom, you would be up about, call it 39% on your Bitcoin investment. So where are we now? Well, we're at about plus 9.4%, which is approaching that danger zone. Obviously, any percentage above zero is going to be more risky because this is indicating the average returns of any wallets that have been active in the past 30 days. So Crypto being the zero-sum game that it is, it's going to spend about an equal amount of time above and below 0%. So even during this very successful 2024 for crypto and Bitcoin, you can see if you look at the orange line, it's spending about an equal amount of time above and below. So you have your opportunities to find what a relative low is uh, and what a relative high is. And right now, we're starting to get a little bit in that concerning level. So yes, we have a lot of good things that are uh, helping Bitcoin to be able to surge the way it has. Trump being elected is being perceived by the crowd, whether right or wrong, to be a very bullish event. More importantly, in my opinion, the FOMC, nah, I wouldn't say more importantly, actually, I take it back, uh, of relative importance would be the FOMC's interest rate reduction for their second time in three months. They didn't have a uh, FOMC meeting last month, but the month before that, they reduced interest rates by 50 BPS. This time around, they reduced by another 25 BPS. This makes it easier for the economy to flourish because interest rates are staying low. So they are trying to combat inflation. And once that announcement was made yesterday, we saw that secondary wave of bullish price action that eventually got us up to where we ended up topping today at about 77.8K. So two very good events, but back to my point here, 
MVRV still has to fluctuate between 0% over time. And the fact that we're at close to about 10% returns on average for any address active in the past 30 days, that's indicative of a bit of an overheated result for average traders right now. And that has to come down at some point. Doesn't mean we necessarily have to crash or retrace, but it means we probably have to simmer down and maybe chop a little bit in the 75 to 78 K range, or even, you know, have a minor scare back down to the low 70 Ks, whatever happens, it's going to allow the 30 day average returns to have some losers again from all the people who might be buying right now. Hope, hope that makes sense. On top of that, the 365 day MVRV for what it's worth is starting to climb again. Any wallet active in the past year is up about 23.5% on their investments. So that's a little bit scary. Not as scary as the 30 day. We've seen the 365 day get as high as plus 70%. So there's a little more of a high ceiling and a low basement for how much these percentages can stretch on the long term. Either way, uh, be a little bit cautious of the fact that we're really starting to climb toward a couple of danger zone areas. Now, another point of interest is the fact that whale transactions, specifically $1 million or more transactions happening on a daily basis, we saw them skyrocket. And this is happening all over crypto, not just for Bitcoin, like I'm showing now. Over 4,000 BTC wallets in one day, uh, I'm sorry, 4,000 BTC transactions valued at over $1 million in one day. That's the first time this has happened since March 10th, literally right around that all-time high. Um, let me see if I can make this a little more granular, just looking at the past three months. So generally speaking, big whale transaction spikes are signs that we could see a reversal soon. Now, we didn't really see it other than this minor drawdown here the next day after we saw the the whale spike from the Trump news. Um, and the whales have actually continued to be transacting a lot. So in my opinion, there's a lot of polarization even among whales uh, that are making massive transactions right now. So I'm not necessarily concerned that this was a, a top marker. Obviously, prices kept climbing after that happened. You can see this last one on the 28th, that was a top marker, but we would, have, we would need to see whale transactions kind of stop eventually and then assess whether they stopped right after a, you know, a bit of a drop or a bit of a rise. Um, whatever day they spike on, if that was a big day for crypto or a very bad day for crypto, Generally, that's going to be the signal that we are going to see a reversal in the opposite direction. So because whale transactions are still high, I think they're still moving and wheeling and dealing pretty actively right now, but eventually they won't and we'll have to assess from there. And what is a positive sign about whales is the fact that there's been a lot of accumulation among 10 plus BTC wallets, uh, especially starting here around October 13th. So give or take about seven weeks or so, we've seen about 28,675 more BTC accumulated from wallets with 10 or more BTC. That's a very good sign and a signal that we can continue upwards. Now, what's a little concerning is miners are moving the opposite direction. Uh, they matter also. And yes, there's a lot of overlap between miners and whales, but you can see, especially right around here, they started to go the opposite direction. And since September 23, third or so this is uh we'll call it yeah about about seven weeks ago also so they've they've dropped about 60,921 BTC over that time um and that has to be a little bit concerning because miners can absolutely have some influence on the future direction of BTC uh BTC's price now what's also a little concerning is the fact that Tether and USD coin among 100,000 to $10 million holders, which is kind of the sweet spot of active whales and sharks, they're dropping their stable coins a ton. So it's pretty clear they've been flipping dry powder 
for more Bitcoin, you can see these big drops right here that happened right as the Trump news came out. Uh, so they're, they're not showing signs of bringing in more fiat into stable coins for even more buying right now. And we're going to need that if we're really going to push toward these, you know, once unheard of numbers of 80K, 90K, 100K plus. Uh, we still need to see stable coins cycling in from those big wallets here. So keep that in mind as well. I still like the sign of 10 plus BTC wallets growing and growing with more and more confidence. So I, I'm still overall pretty happy with this chart. Just keep in mind that miners and stablecoin holders need to pick up the pace a little if we're going to continue climbing. Also, take a look at this ratio of daily on-chain transaction volume in profit to loss chart. I know that metric is a mouthful, but in short, it's measuring how many transactions are happening when the Bitcoin wallet is moving coins at a higher price than when they receive them or at a lower price than when they receive them. And yeah, we're seeing a massive spike as of today with tons of profit taking, 5.1 transactions in profit for every one transaction at a loss. Yeah, it's easily the highest in the past year. The last time we saw a spike this high was about May 14th. And we did see a slight pullback there before one more rally and then it dropped big. But I, I still... I still get concerned when we see big spikes like this. You can see another one that happened about a week before the all-time high. Um, generally, you don't want to see too many profit takers without the loss takers jumping in also because the bottoms happen when we see, let's go 1.0 right here on the axis. So this line represents the profit versus loss line. And if there's more losses, and profit, then you're going to see a spike, a bar below it and vice versa if it's above it. So these, for example, being well below zero or, or the 1.0 line, they were indicative that there were tons of people capitulating, retail traders jumping out. And what do you know? We get this big bounce. Of course, that was aided by Trump being elected as the majority of crypto traders were hoping for. Um, but nevertheless, be a little cautious when you see a spike that high. I also like this. So mean dollar invested age is moving down. Um, and we saw how much that influenced Bitcoin being able to thrive throughout that late 2023, early 2024 bull run before we started chopping. And notice how we started to kind of move flat with this yellow line throughout the middle part of 2024. And then after this big dormant spike, right around here and mean dollar invested age started to move down, Bitcoin takes off again. Not a coincidence. When dormant coins are moving back into circulation and they're ceasing from being stagnant in these old wallets, good things generally happen for any coin where you see that kind of pattern. Now, we're not free falling this mean dollar invested age line like we were back here, but it's good that we're creeping lower and lower. It means that Older wallets are definitely paying attention to this and they're contributing to this rally by injecting older coins by assumingly taking profit back into circulation. You can see a fair amount of realized profits going on, but nothing too significant, which, you know, I, I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. Um, we, when, when Maxim's on these calls with me, he talks about how we need these kinds of big spikes to influence rallies, and this one definitely did. But they can also sometimes indicate that uh, we're getting close to a top too. So these need some context, but overall, I don't find anything wrong with these mild profit spikes that are happening uh, and have been happening for about four weeks now. And then supply and exchange is also continuing to move down over time. A great sign there that there is less risk of a large future sell-off upcoming at any given time. We look for things like this, this big spike in inflow as a signal that we might be seeing a top and that ended up being a perfect top signal for the sentiment users who caught this one right before we dropped down. We discussed social dominance briefly. You can see how Bitcoin had all 
crypto eyes on it. About 30% of all discussions at peak, peak Trump euphoria when the news came down. Uh, but it's come down as people have started to veer into altcoins. Not really a bullish or bearish signal at the moment. This was pretty much news-based and expected. And then weighted sentiment, for what it's worth, we just started to see a little bit of a drop. Let me refresh here. Yeah, we started to see a bit of a drop here, and uh, that's a good sign. It might mean that the crowd is starting to expect um, a retrace, which can further influence a rise because there's a lot of potential profit-taking and doubters. Note that the RSI for Bitcoin is up to about 71 and a half now. Average is at about 50, right about there. So anything above that means we're getting a little bit overheated with the velocity. Anything below means we're due for uh, a little bit of a pickup. So expected when we're on this kind of surge we're on right now. Uh, just keep that in mind, especially if we start to get up to like 80 or above here. Those are usually signals we're getting pretty toppy. Now, this was a, a chart I was very much looking forward to checking out with you guys. It's the amount of holders that basically have any amount of coins in their wallets. So it's non-empty wallets. And after a decline from about October 13th to Election Day, it's actually starting to climb again. So there is some FOMO going on, 24,703 just about a 0.05% increase in non-empty wallets. Not really much, but it's also only been three days. Um, I would expect this to keep climbing because it, it it does seem like people are hearing about crypto more due to the fact that headlines are announcing an all-time high. That tends to get non-crypto participants into crypto a little bit. Uh, generally, we see better bull runs when this line is actually going down because it's an indication of capitulation. Uh, but, you know, going flat like we have been, this was already a sign that people were doubting the rally that had started in mid-October. Um, so hopefully we don't see, you know, tons of addresses jumping out of the woodwork and new novice retail traders jumping in and creating FOMO. Uh, I'm very interested to see how the weekend performs without the stock market running and, uh, you know, Monday might be a very telling day for us. So we'll keep you posted on this chart if we can. Now, moving on to some social trends, no surprise to see Donald Trump seeing this huge spike in social volume and dominance. At the time he, his election news was really peaking, his uh, name was making up about 8% of all topics in crypto circles. That's massive, uh, especially because it's not even a crypto adjacent subject like Bitcoin or, um, you know, Satoshi, something like that. But nevertheless, this was a huge spike. Um, and you can see how it coincided with the run up. I'll zoom into just the past week and the social volume as the news was coming in was just going bonkers as the price was rising. And you can see when it really peaked, not a coincidence, Everyone starts talking about, hey, why did why did Bitcoin just hit a new all time high and go above 75K? Oh, it's Donald Trump. Let's all talk about that. And then we see a, a minor correction until people stop associating Trump with Bitcoin's all time high quite so much. And then it resumes its rally. Just a minor example. We've had much better ones in the past, but I still think this is interesting. Always pay attention to the predominant subject that the crowd is perceiving as the explanation for why Bitcoin or crypto just went on a big surge. And when it really hits its peak, more often than not, that tends to be when we at least see a local top for, you know, half a day, sometimes days, sometimes weeks. This ended up being a very short-term one and the FOMC, which I can show here, gave Bitcoin's rally a little bit of a second life. They announced that the interest rates would be reduced right here, about, call it 36 hours ago from the time of my recording. And then we saw a little bit more of a climb to the eventual new all-time high here above 77K. So yeah, both of these were kind of the A and B subjects that most would attribute and probably correctly attribute to 
why crypto saw the historic week that it did. And last but not least, let's take a look at a few of the hot or cold networks to end the week and see which ones are seeing a particular high rise in things like active addresses, network growth, whale transactions. So if we, <coughs> excuse me, go to the leaderboard here and we go to this far right column, overall average rank leaders, Cardano is actually the most active compared to its three month average right now out of any of the 105 or so assets that are on this awesome model that I recommend you all check out. So Cardano is in the 96th percentile among these assets for the past 24 hours. This is in price, of course, 97th percentile in the past week and 96th percentile in the past month. Um, so it's had a, a really good month all of a sudden because it's one of the best performers. Um, over the past three months, it's actually still not going very well, which is interesting. But um, Cardano is obviously a very hot network right now with a lot of this being attributed to FOMO. I'd be a little bit careful in um, buying into Cardano while its network got hot after a big pump. I'd be much more interested in taking a risk in something like Seller, which is seeing huge activity, but these percentages aren't in the 90s, indicating they're one of the best price performers over the past day, week, or month. So keep that in mind as well. Um, Ethereum, another one that is seeing super high network activity all of a sudden, but also that's due to a lot of FOMO because these are very high percentages. Dogecoin, same thing. We're seeing a lot of big names here. We even see Bitcoin um, as one of the top assets in network activity spikes over the past three months. So just a quick recap there. And on the other end, I want to point out XRP is seeing one of the smallest uh, amounts of activity compared to its three-month average. It seems to be very ignored right now relative to some of the other large cap altcoins. So that could actually be a sign that it's a little under the radar right now. Um, looking for any other big ones. Pepe, also another big name up here. Ethereum name service. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good recap here. Um, and you can always check the grid view here with all of the fancy red and blue uh, squares. Um, just to point out Cardano, you know, active addresses, whale transactions, I can click on the right box there, social dominance, uh, even mean dollar age and age consumed, they're all like super high. And you can always go to, you know, ADA and then go to my main template. And you can validate that the model knows what it's talking about. Here you go, transaction volume, very high. Active addresses and circulation, super high spike there. Um, MVRVs are expectedly high. That's not included on the model. Whale transactions, another huge spike. That's These are all like three-month highs. So the model's correct in that Cardano is seeing a huge spike. And um, you can rely on the data and they're being largely correct unless we have some sort of crazy data anomaly, which is not common at all on sentiment, thankfully. Anyways, so to recap this week, huge all-time high for Bitcoin, a lot more attention in general from outsiders of crypto paying attention to crypto all of a sudden. Um, I would pay attention to FOMO getting high, watch things like weighted sentiment and the ratio of positive versus negative comments to see how um, they might spike. That would indicate we might be hitting a local top. I'm not seeing a huge risk of it yet, but I'd be a little cautious just because the average returns for Bitcoin are, you know, approaching double digits for the past 30 days. And that's usually a bit of a scary sign. But uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful, guys. Leave comments below. Let us know what you think about the video. And any follow-up questions you have, we can try to answer ourselves as we see them. Um, and in the meantime, stay safe. Congrats to the majority of you who have been longing. And don't forget to check out San R so you can put in your predictions and win real crypto for being correct. I'll talk to you all next week and have a happy and safe weekend.